Well, hello, everyone. How are you? Alexis Brooks here from Higher Journeys, back with another episode of Conscious Commentary. I I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I am smiling broadly from ear to ear, um, just reflecting on a magical trip out west, I would say. As many of you know, uh, the Conscious Life Expo, shout out to the folks at CLE, uh, 16th Annual, uh, just wrapped up about a week ago, actually, a little less than a week ago. And uh, my husband and I were out there uh, covering the show. We've got some uh, great uh, interviews that we will be bringing to you. I'll announce that toward the end. But I want to get into <laughs> what uh, what I'm going to be sharing with you today. For those of you that were on my Facebook page, you may have you may have uh, gotten a couple of teasers because I, as I have said, I'm chomping at the bit to share with you what I'm going to call a slew, a slew of synchronicity. I have used the term in the past, synchronicity cluster. I don't know that I coined I've coined the term, although I I don't know that I've heard it used elsewhere. And I I use this term, or I've called uh, synchronicity cluster as such, when an individual experiences a slew of synchronicity. Now, I'm going to use this term quite broadly today, because what I'm about to explain to you, and I had to really think about everything that happened to me in the span of really just several days, uh, which I'll get into shortly. But I suppose some of them would be considered classic synchronicity, we have a manifestation thrown in there, a little bit of intuition. But for the sake of uh, not having coming up with another name, I'm just going to call this just a slew of synchronicity or synchronicity clusters. So without further ado, these are going to be stories. And then we're going to get a little bit into what on earth may or, or outside of earth may have been causing uh, yours truly to be having so much synchronicity uh, in such a short period of time. So without further ado, let's get to it. Let me start with story number one. It occurred February 8th. That was the day my husband and I flew out from Boston uh, directly into Los Angeles. And uh, essentially what happened was everything went fine. Had a car pick us up and bring us to the airport, brought our bags in, and we're about to check our bags. And who do we see? But an old law school uh, uh, classmate and friend of my husband named Greg. Shout out, Greg hadn't seen him for years, which was great. Hey, Greg, how you doing? All is well. He was actually uh, about to head off uh, to Florida to play some golf with a a couple of of his buddies. It was great seeing him. But what I have to tell you guys is that as soon as we parted ways with Greg, I turned to my husband, I said, you know what, I just have a feeling we're going to run into somebody else that we know here. He said, okay, He, he knows when I get these feelings, and they they tend to come very, very quickly. Oftentimes, as I've, I think I've explained before, uh, it it will be even auditory, or I, I'll hear words. You're going to run into someone. This was a feeling. I, I said, I have a feeling we're going to run into someone else. Okay, so let's get to the action here. What happened? Should I tell the story about the lost license? Now, nah, I think I'll leave that one out. There was another little. I wouldn't call it a synchronicity. Just a little little gaff uh, between. Uh, between checking our bags in and getting on the plane, but all was well, no worries there. Let's uh, fast forward, get through security, had some downtime to have a bite to eat before we got on the flight. We get on the flight, buckle in. And we're actually, I think, in the last group to board. And uh, we're so we're sitting there, my husband, my husband and I both, since we're both tall, (laughs) we tend to take the uh, aisle seat. So he was on one side of the aisle, I'm on the other. And I'm probably getting into reading, doing a little bit of reading. And I hear my husband say, oh, my gosh, there's Donna getting on the plane. In fact, she was the last person to get on the plane. Who's Donna? And by the way, I got permission. I'm not going to use her last name, but I got permission to tell the story because it's absolutely fabulous. Well, Donna, (laughs) I have a feeling I'm going to run into someone I know. We Bingo. Sure did. Donna is a longtime friend of mine and also happens to be my physician. (laughs) Donna, how you doing, girl? (laughs) I think we were both so shocked. We're just like, uh, she she didn't even know what to say. It happens. We run into people we know. But obviously, what I'm emphasizing here is the fact that I had a feeling that I was going to run into someone that I know. But listen, the story doesn't end there. I'm going to try to go through this because I've got several other magical things to share with you. We're probably going to go run a little long today, but so be it. I I hope you'll indulge me. 
But Donna, again, friend hadn't seen for a while. I know that I had uh, invited her, she and her husband and family to our annual New Year's Day party, and she couldn't make it because she was on call. And just two to three days prior to leaving, I had been blowing up her phone because there's a homeopathic remedy that I like to take with me when I'm traveling. And I couldn't remember the name of it. So I had been calling and texting and no dice on uh, what uh, on getting a hold of her. So I ended up getting something, a homeopathic remedy that I thought would be good for what I needed for travel. Well, (laughs) not only did I uh, get to see her and, you know, just the, the surprise of that. But I got my doctor on the flight with me out to LA. We went over the homeopathic thing. I ended up getting the right thing. That was all good. So that I, I, I would call that maybe a little synchronicity or convenience <laughs> within a synchronicity. But here's the, the deal with, with Donna. And this is where it gets a little serious. You know, it was interesting because when she got on the flight, we said, Donna, and she kind of looked a little dazed, a little out of it. I thought, huh, I hope she's not coming out here for an emergency. I mean, that's the first thing we thought of because she looked a little daunted, perhaps a little stressed. Well, it turns out that Donna, and again, she did give me permission to to share a, a little bit of this story. Obviously, in her position as both a, a medical doctor as well as a homeopathic doctor and has a very successful practice here in Massachusetts. She is daunted by patients and people calling her and, you know, just lots of I don't know, she she felt like there was a lot of energetic uh, sort of smog, I suppose, around her of, of late. Um, hence the reason why she she said she probably looked so stressed and not as surprised and delighted that she, as she should have been for seeing us. We are about to go on a flight together uh, to Los Angeles. Uh, so in addition to the, kind of the day-to-day stress that she had been going through, and I guess it had intensified, she was really uh, mourning the loss of a, a a dear childhood friend of hers that uh, she lost tragically back, oh, I think in the summer, but still feeling the effects of it. In fact, she said, I did not know this individual, but she said that everyone in um, this person's circle was just devastated still. And she felt very overwhelmed by that. Well, let me let me see if I can cut to the chase here as far as the beyond the synchronicity of saying, having a feeling I'm going to run into someone and lo and behold, here's my, my physician and friend Donna on our flight out to L.A., Donna, as I mentioned, is, uh, in addition to a medical doctor, she is a a brilliant naturopath and homeopathy uh, specialist. And she was coming out to LA because her brother, who is actually a well-known actor, I'm not going to mention his name, but I don't think it really, it's neither here nor there, but um, he lives out in LA. She's celebrating her birthday, which falls around, uh, uh, I guess it was February. We left on the 8th. I think her birthday was the following weekend. And she always comes out to LA to celebrate her birthday. Homeopathic, naturopathic, all into this stuff that all of us are into this consciousness thing, as we call it. It's a big thing. Had no idea about the Conscious Life Expo. Well, to make a very long story short, once I told her why I was coming out, and of course, she knows the work that I do as a journalist and in this field, didn't know about the Conscious Life Expo. When I told her about it, I said, hey, you know, Donna, I think I could hook you up, maybe get you a couple of passes. If you have some free time, why don't you come? She jumped at it. She couldn't believe it. Well, again, to make a long story short, she ended up joining us on Saturday and actually jumped in and helped. Uh, I introduced Stephen Halpern's uh, beautiful, brilliant talk that he gave to a packed house, not even standing room. And Donna was so anxious to be of help with I, Stephen needed something toward the end. And she jumped in and, and helped with that. And oh, she just the bottom line is she stayed she came two days, actually, she stayed all day Saturday. And I think she came back, she came back another day. And still had plenty of time. She, you know, visiting friends and taking some downtime. Just, she said, being at the Conscious Life Expo and having the chance to spend some time with me changed the entire trajectory of her trip and her mood. And we shared, she, she got to download with me about some of the, the, obviously the grief that she had been going through with the loss of her friend. And she said, as a matter of fact, that while she was out in LA, she got what she believed to be some very poignant signs from her, her friend, um, which uh, I think I'll leave that for now. But let's just say that what 
started as a fun little synchronicity of having that feeling of running into a friend ended up changing really the whole tenor of her trip. She said coming to the Conscious Life Expo just, you know, and running into me just shifted everything for her. So I am just delighted for that. As a matter of fact, she's already, she's probably booked her flight to come out to the 17th annual Conscious Life Expo. She's basically committed. I'm like, I can't even believe you didn't know about this. In fact, she she's so brilliant. She should be speaking at it. So we're going to work on that too. So that's story number one. I'm going to call it the intuition running into Donna after having a feeling that I would do so. My husband, of course, is just yeah, there she goes again with this. He listens now when I say I have a feeling about something. Let's move on to the next one. I'm going to call this the manifestation. Now, you may have heard about little hints of this before, because I, I have put something on my Facebook page about uh, the little manifestation experiment, we'll call it, that I did, along with my friend, Jimmy Church. Shout out to Jimmy uh, we had a great time. Uh, Jimmy and Rita are phenomenal. And it's always a wonderful reunion when we get to hang out with them and all of our colleagues out at the expo. So here's a story with with the manifestation. Okay, let's see if I can kind of shorten it here. Obviously, there were lots of different events going on, special events and award ceremonies, and, and uh, in addition to the workshops and panels. And on Saturday night, February 10th, uh, George Norrie, of Coast to Coast AM fame, uh, held a, uh, a speaker's reception and award ceremony in which three people were uh, uh, given awards uh, that were obviously deserving of them. And it's always nice to see uh, the speakers accept their uh, well-deserved awards. David Adair, Barbara Marks Hubbard, and Lynn McTaggart. Really, really fun to see. But the event, in uh, we typically attend every year, the George Norrie reception for the speakers. All of us that are a part of the expo uh, showed up, most of us. And uh, so I'm si- I'm standing there. Well, let me back up a little bit and explain, set the stage a little bit. So George is hosting this. And if, for those of you that know George Norrie, he's very, <laughs> very animated and sometimes funny. And uh, sometimes he's funny a lot, actually. Uh, fun to be around. He had been, there There were some um, raffle uh, prizes that they were giving away, you know, $100 gift certificate to this and some of the uh, booths uh, that were, or vendors, I should say, that were at the es- expo had donated some things, really fun things to give away. And so all of us put our, there, I don't know, maybe 150 or so folks, maybe not even that many, 100, 150 or so folks in this uh, party. And so we all had put our names into this big fishbowl. And uh, Jimmy and I were standing at a table. There were kind of cocktail tables interspersed throughout the room. And it was Jimmy Church, myself, and Tom Danheiser, who is George's, uh, George Norrie's producer for Coast to Coast. We're all standing at the, actually, no, let me take that back. That was earlier in the evening. Tom at this point was up at the front calling out the names a lot. No, George was calling out the names. I'm just trying to recreate this whole thing because it gets so exciting. Both Tom and George were up at the front um, on the stage. Now, they pulled out one of the uh, prizes that would t- would be uh, raffled off. Jimmy and I are standing there at the table close to the to the front. And it's this gold, what I would call generator pyramid. Have you ever heard of those? These these are basically uh, pyramidal structures that are designed to affect energy, essentially. And I believe what you do is you wear you wear them in meditation, and you can use them in several ways. But they're ener- energy generators. They help to shift energy, make things happen. <laughs> I've never had one, uh, and I'm not really that familiar with them, but I'm I'm very interested in how uh, how that whole process works in terms of the movement of energy through geometry. So that was the prize to be uh, pulled pulled and a name to be pulled uh, for someone to win that prize. Well, Jimmy looked and said, "Oh my gosh, I want that." And then I looked at, almost at the same time and I said, "I want that." And we looked at each other and started laughing. I said something occurred to me to say, Jimmy check this out. I put my arm around him. And I said, one of us is going to win this pyramid. I want you, you know, where our arms are locked. I want you to focus. 
keep looking at that pyramid. This is the truth, folks. Keep staring at it. And if either one of us wins, we've won. One of us is going to get this. Now, keep in mind, there are 150, maybe even 200 names in that fishbowl. Next thing you know, George Nori pulls out the ticket. Alexis Brooks. (laughs) You know, I'm just kind of like, okay, it worked. Yay. But here's the funny thing. Jimmy runs up to the stage. You had to see it. It was the funniest thing. Here you have all these speakers here. Barbara Marks Hubbard and Lynn McTaggart and God knows who. Everybody, Daniel Brinkley. All of our friends were in there. And Jimmy goes running up and I look at him and I say, you're not Alexis. Of course, everyone's laughing. <laughs> but he was so excited because we did this little manifestation experiment in, in the presence of the intention experiment woman herself, Lynn McTaggart, who I actually talked to after the fact and said, you know, your experiment worked. <laughs> but the bottom line is, I, uh, I I guess you would call this the manifestation. Uh, I just said, let's concentrate. One of us is going to get this. George Norrie calls my name. Well, of course, we had to make a big story out of it. So after people were wondering, why the heck is Jimmy Church running up when Alexis Brooks won? And so I grabbed the microphone from Tom Danheiser. And I said, let, let me give you a little bit of the backstory, folks, on, on what we think occurred here. So it was just fun, really, really fun. And as we speak, this uh, nice little pyramid is sitting comfortably behind me waiting to be utilized. I'll let you know uh, what happens with it. Can I do a little experimenting with that as well? So that's number two. I want to move on because I still have a couple more in my my little bag of magic here. Just it was just a phenomenal. I'm really excited because it was a, a just a whole slew, just nonstop synchronicity. Here's number three, and this is probably I would call this one of the more classic synchronicities. Howard Martin, my buddy from Heart Math, who I was so excited uh, spoke this year at the expo. And of course, we had planned on hooking up. He was flying in on Saturday. Um, Of course, uh, I had come in a couple of days before. Now, this was the same evening as the George Norrie reception. So after the reception, a bunch of us, as we typically do, go down to the the hotel bar and just kind of download and tell stories. And I'm actually with Donna, my friend from story number one. We're sitting at the bar. And I said to my, I turned to my husband, I said, oh, I haven't heard from Howard Martin yet. I wonder if he's here. I think I'm going to give him a call on his cell phone. So I proceed to pull out my cell phone. And at that moment, you guys probably have guessed it. Howard Martin missed call like a minute before. Number three. Here we go, folks. <laughs> this that That's a pretty short story, but to the point. That was a classic synchronicity. And so I called him. I said, Howard, I'll, I'll tell you the story when you get down here. He, he came down and met us at the bar. Uh, but uh, all he could do was chuckle at that one. Classic synchronicity. So that was number three. Now, let's, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh, there were just so many different things kind of linked together. But let's move on to what I'll call synchronicity. I'm going to call this also the synchronicity because I think it falls into that classic uh, case of synchronicity. Other, um, uh, Aside from the, I'm calling one of them the intuition, one the manifestation, and I would say two classic synchronicities. This was post the conference. This is something that my husband and I typically do. We love to, first of all, we have a family close to Palm Springs. So we headed out after the, the, the expo to visit family. And then from there, we there's a resort in Palm Springs that we absolutely love. And so of course, we had to partake uh, for a couple of days in that. Now, let's bring Donna back into the story here. Donna was just so stoked, (laughs) just like me to to hang out and spend some time. And so she sends me this, um, she she says, I'm vowing to stay in closer touch with you. Now we, we live a few towns away, maybe. She's maybe a half hour away from me. Uh, and we hardly connect, <laughs> maybe once a year. And here we are in LA. So she said, I have an idea. There's this app. She's a big techie, more so than me. There's this app that I, I think you should download. And it's this video app. It's it's called Marco Polo. Have you ever heard of that? I had never heard of it. I, I'm not really into these video apps. But nonetheless, she wanted me to download the app so she could send me video messages and updates and blah, 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 uh, and vice versa. I'd be able to, to reciprocate by putting a video out for her. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. And somebody said, you know what? Yeah, 
let's try it out. Let, I, I'll probably play with it for a few days and then never use it again. But I'll go. And by the way, you're getting a little plug, Marco Polo. It is kind of cute <laughs> for those that want to check out the, the app. Okay, but let's get to the synchronicity. So as I'm sitting out on this balcony uh, at our resort, overlooking palm trees and this beautiful pool, and it's nighttime, I said, I'm, I think maybe I'll I get some downtime. I'm going to go ahead and download this little app and, and maybe send uh, Donna a message. Well, folks, the moment I downloaded the app, it had completed downloading, and I'm about to record a little great to see you, Donna, video. I hear a group of kids down below in the pool playing what? Marco Polo. You know that game? Marco Polo. Mark, you've heard it, right? Look, folks, at this point, I, I, there was nothing more I could say except we're, I'm just a synchronicity magnet or there's something going on that's that's uh, making for synchronicities to magnetize themselves themselves to me and probably others. We're going to get into that in a minute before we close out. I have not heard, I don't know that I, I had heard or witnessed anyone playing Marco Polo. That's like an old pool game. I think a lot of people like to play in, in the pool for years. And I just downloaded this app called Marco Polo. And these kids below are shouting out Marco Polo. I think I actually recorded it. I might be able to find it. And I'll slip this into the to the uh, little podcast if I can find it. Because it was just, you know, you know, when these things happen so often, the first inclination is to say, I can't believe it. By the way, I don't do that anymore. And so, or I'll say unbelievable. And I actually said, you know what? I'm not going to use words that are disempowering. I'm going to say astonishing or believable. This is happening. The manifestation, the intuition, the feeling, and a pair of synchronicity. What's going on? So what's going on? You know me. <laughs> when these things happen, it, obviously, one synchronicity is is plenty for me. But when they happen, and I have talked about this before, what I call synchronicity clusters or cluster. In fact, I spoke about this on a radio program that I uh, guested on some time ago, about a year ago with a, a psychologist that has um, a show on what he calls coincidence, uh, synchronicity. So this without question was a cluster of stuff that happened. My husband once again is just shaking his head. Uh, but I uh, you know, in the spirit of trying to understand, I, I'm not necessarily a cause and effect person. In other words, when something happens, you're looking for, there, there typically is a root, but not in the traditional sense. We're talking about, I'm going to use the axiom as above, so below, and actually give you a quote that I found that I, I, I thought to be so apropos by a gentleman named Richard Tarnas. Let me read this to you, and then I want to go on to mention yet somebody else who I think may have put my slew of experiences into a little bit of context. The quote by Richard Tarnas that I found, which I think is beautiful, goes as follows, quote, the universe is informed and pervaded by a fundamental holistic patterning, which extends through every level, so that a constant synchronicity or meaningful correlation exists between astronomical events and human events. This is represented in the basic esoteric axiom as above, so below, which reflects a universe, all of whose parts are integrated into intelligible whole, into an intelligible whole. Richard Tarnas. I thought that was completely apropos, but where does the above happen? Where is the, was there an astronomical event that, uh, that may have been taking place around that time. The coral meaningful correlation exists between astronomical events and human events. So my goal was to do a little bit of digging to see if I could get some sort of, I won't say cause, but some sort of context for why this bum rush essentially of synchronicity was happening. And so I turned to who I call my go-to person on synchronicity. I've mentioned her before. I love her. Miss Trish McGregor, Rob and Trish McGregor, the the, the dynamic duo of synchronicity, uh, and their blog, Synchro Secrets, which I will make sure to have a link to. I said, you know, and Trish is awesome. She gets back to me 
almost immediately, immediately. And she did in this case, I, I told her, gave her a summary. I did not tell her, Trisha, if you're listening now, you know what I was emailing you about in terms of the stories. But uh, I thought if anyone knows of astronomical events, it'll be it'll be Trish McGregor. And so she, when I explained to her, I had the slew of synchronicity happen, she immediately came back to me and said, quote, I suspect you were feeling the effects of the solar eclipse in Aquarius on February 15th. This was a partial solar eclipse that I was vaguely familiar with. She said, uh, it, along with that, uh, as well as a bunch of planets in intuitive Pisces. Remember the intuition? Ecl- and then she goes on to say, eclipses tend to be felt before and after they occur, as well as on the day they happen. So essentially, mine began on February 8th, all the way up to February 13th in the run up to the eclipse. I then went to her blog, Synchro Secrets, where she elaborated a bit uh, on a post, I believe on February 15th, I'll actually put the link to that actual blog post for those of you that would like to read it. And she says, quote, the eclipse in Aquarius on February 15th will be only a uh, only be a partial eclipse. It will begin over the Antarctica and the surrounding ocean and move up and over south. Astrologically, solar eclipses are like double new moons in that they often bring twice the number of opportunities opportunities uh, on a regular new moon, the planet Uranus, symbolic of sudden unexpected change, forms a fairly close angle to the eclipse degree, suggesting that new opportunities may surface suddenly out of the blue. Mercury, the planet of communication and travel, is closely conjunct with the eclipse by two degrees, indicating that communication may be impacted in some way. She goes on to say this should be a positive eclipse for air signs, Gemini, Libra, and of course, Aquarius, and for fire signs, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. There you have it. And it goes on. It's it's longer. Go go and read that, that quick post. It's really good. Okay, so there you have it. And this is what she said. Now, is this absolutely unequivocally why these bombardment of synchronicity and, and et cetera and intuitions were happening? I don't know. But I, again, the as above, so below axiom is to me uh, makes perfect sense. I've always felt that we in the physical are a mirror. We on the inside are a mirror for what's on the outside and it reciprocates. The outside comes from the inside. In this case, we're talking above, if you will, versus uh, below, as above, so below. I just don't Think, well, first of all, I don't believe we live in a random universe. I am certain that we live in a beautiful, magical universe filled with purpose and love, of course. And I got to witness, along with a few a few other witnesses, uh, the beauty of that as above, so below. So there you have it. Those I, I was I knew it would take me a little while to pack those stories in there. But I hope, uh, hope I wasn't talking too fast. I just felt like I had to get them, get them out and get them to you. And, and leave you with this, guys. (sighs) Think of the manifestation. Now, look, this was a thing. Yes, it's true. Let's, let's manifest some love, shall we? We're going to end on on that note, too, before we close out. But uh, it's not just about things we, we know full well. It's about manifesting peace most importantly, peace and love and harmony. But uh, there you have it, the power of manifestation. Was it the the effects of the uh, astronomical event known as the partial solar eclipse that made for all these events? I don't know. All I know is getting a beautiful display over the span of several days, and frankly, throughout my entire life of synchronicity and related events, I know unequivocally, that we live in a magical universe. So let me end with this. Let's not squander that opportunity. I'm going to bring up something that is, uh, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of a somber note, one that you are all no doubt familiar with by now. And that is the horrific, horrific event that happened in Florida on Valentine's Day. Still just a day shy of the uh, astronomical event. Did that have something to do with it? I don't know. 
And of course, details are still unfolding on uh, what actually went down. I will tell you that um, while at the same resort, uh, enjoying myself, I get, uh, I think I had just come, we did a little spa day and I just come back up to our room or I had just come back up to the room to have some lunch sit on that balcony and uh, saw the, the god awful news. Here we go again. Shortly thereafter, I get a text message from my dear friend who at the time was in Washington, D.C., visiting another friend who had been going through some stress. And my friend tells me, oh, my God, guess what? I'm not going to mention the person's name, but a mutual friend of our son attends that school in Parkland, Florida. And eventually I found out that both my friend's son and the daughter, who was a little bit younger, but they both have friends whose siblings died. This is from them, by the way, directly. I know that there are a lot of people speculating on what went down, as we all tend to do these days with so many of these. That's not what this show is about. It's about, regardless of what happened, tragedy happened, craziness happened. And with the stories that I just shared with you, taking this, you know, to the serious side for a minute, we live in a magical universe. And we're connected to that magic. And now more than ever, we need to evoke that brilliance and that magic and shut the madness down. How will that occur? Everyone's taking their shot at, forgive that pun, let me just erase that, taking, uh, putting forth their opinion on how we shut it down. And maybe all of it needs to be done. But sit down, be quiet, start intending the way you want your world to look, intending how you envision us treating one another, envisioning a world of peace and harmony. And I'm not saying that that in and of itself is going to do the trick, but why would we not use that uh, power that inner power that we have to to get that process going. We are indeed powerful creatures. And when, when things like this happen, uh, I'm going back now to the synchronicity slew or clusters. If nothing else, it's a reminder that there, there's so much that we're not seeing about our capability, our link to the universe, and the way we can positively leverage it for the highest good of all of us on this planet. So I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up what happened in Florida. My heart goes out to every, everyone affected by this yet another event. So I'm going to leave that there. And I wish you all well. I'm intending you all beauty and uh, go out there and do some manifesting for yourself. Get some... You are all synchronicity magnets, by the way. Maybe we'll have to wait for another partial solar eclipse. Oh, I have a feeling there are going to be lots of astronomical events that will that will uh, make our manifesting and synchronistic powers increase. So let's keep our eyes to the sky as well. All right, everyone. That, there's a lot of information for you. Be sure to visit higherjourneys.com if you're getting this on YouTube or iTunes. Uh, You can go right to higherjourneys.com and get the uh, post accompanying this uh, podcast for uh, some relevant links. And just another quick uh, announcement. Uh, The following week, we've got coming back from Conscious Life Expo. I'm so excited. Got two great interviews to share with you. The first of which is with our friend Jimmy Church. Uh, This was, of course, I interviewed him before the big manifestation thing. Otherwise, that would have definitely been in the interview. But he's got some great things to share about the still somewhat fresh news uh, uh, of quote unquote disclosure and some of the gaffes that have taken place since then. <sighs> Loaded story. So we'll be talking to him. That will be next week. Let me give you the date on that if I can. I believe that is it's the last week in March. I'm so, sorry, March, February. That'll be February 20. Dot, dot, dot. Let me make sure I get this right. I believe it's February 28th. February 28th, we'll have Jimmy Church. The following week, I'm going to do two guest shows back to back because I don't want the the interviews to get stale. I want to get them out to you as soon as possible. So we'll have Jimmy Church on February 28th. And then we're going to have a little chat with 
former NBA champ, John Sally, sat down with him. We had a great time. Mr. John Sally uh, will bring that to you on March 7th. So stay tuned for that. All right, folks, I'm out. I am way over time, but you know what? It was worth it. I wanted to share all that good stuff, that good magic with you. So until next time, I'll talk to you soon. I'm your host of Higher Journeys Radio. You've been listening to Conscious Commentary, and I'm Alexis Brooks. Take care. <laughs>